Greetings. It's been a couple weeks since I've done one of these shorter videos and I kind of have felt like I've been on a little dry spell. But I just thought it would be good that if I recapped a little bit of what I shared in my sermon yesterday with my congregation. We've been going through the book of 2 Corinthians and we are in 2 Corinthians 12. And if you're not familiar with 2 Corinthians 12, it's the, the passage where, where Paul is conveying about the special revelation that God has given to him, that he was caught up in the third heaven. And, and because of the surpassing greatness of that revelation, that God gave him a, a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble. And, and so we keyed in on, on just the grace of God yesterday. And and so I just want to talk about that. As Paul starts, he says, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. The first thing that I just want to say about this is that it says it was given to him, this messenger of Satan, this thorn in the flesh. And when we think about that, we think that this came from God. We don't usually, when we think of things that we're blessed with, we don't usually think of the bad things. We think of the good things like our, our family, our health, um, our home, that we have food to eat, that we have a job. But we understand that all those things, even though they are blessings, can be removed from us. In fact, when Jesus was here on earth and he was talking about blessings, he, he said, blessed are those of you who are poor in spirit. Blessed of, are you if you mourn. Blessed are you if you are hunger and you thirst for righteousness. Blessed are you if you're persecuted. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you. Th those don't sound like good things. But the blessings that come, the, the comfort from God, the the presence of God in our life, those things are eternal. All the other blessings of this world, this material blessings, are just temporary. And we know we, we, we don't live for the temporary, we live for the eternal. And so God had a, had a purpose for this messenger of Satan, this, this thorn in the flesh. And it was to keep him humble, but it also drove him to God. He says in the next verse, he says, concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. See, this thorn in the flesh drove Paul to pray. He implored the Lord three times that he might remove this thorn in the flesh from him. This was something that was causing Paul great pain and discomfort. It was weighing on him. And you would think him going to the Lord and all that God uh, called Paul to do and all that Paul went through for the Lord, that God would have just granted him that, that request. But what does God say? Paul says, I implored the Lord three times. And each time God's answer was the same. My grace is sufficient for you. You see, we tend to only think of God's grace when it comes to salvation. You know, God's riches at Christ's expense. That God gave us his, his favor when, when we didn't deserve it. But grace is something that we live by each and every day. We, we continue to stand in the grace of God. And so when I think about those things, and I think about God's grace, and I think all the things that Paul must have learned through this thorn in the flesh, and this experience, I think they are some of the same lessons that you and I need to learn each and every day. For number one, I, I think the lesson is that spiritual blessings are more important than physical ones. You see, we live in the material, temporal world, but we live for the eternal world. And so God is preparing us for glory and physical blessings are just temporal, and the blessings that God gives us are eternal. And so we understand that 
that it's more important for us to, to be holy than to be comfortable. The second lesson is, is that unanswered prayer does not mean the need is not met. What was Paul's request? That God would remove the thorn in the flesh from him. But whenever you pray to God, he will give you the appropriate answer, but it doesn't mean your needs are not met. You see, God will either remove the obstacle from your life, he will either remove the pain from your life, or he will help you climb over it, he will help you to endure it. And so Paul's needs were met. They were met in that he was able to endure this thorn in the flesh. He was able to live through it. He was able to endure it. He was able to to do so for the glory of God. The third lesson is, is that weakness is strength if Christ is in it. You know, we quote that verse all the time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's true that God does give us strength, but it's his strength to do the things that he wants us to do. And so when God makes your your weakness of strength, people can see God over you. And that was the story of Paul's life. He talked about that the only thing he would boast is he would boast in God. He would boast in the cross because without God, without the cross, he was nothing. And so God gave him that strength to overcome the thorn in the flesh. And whatever you are enduring, whatever your request, your obstacle, your hardship might be, God is going to give you the grace to get through it. He will give you the strength to get through it for his glory. That when people look at you, they may not see you, and that's not important, but they would see the God who helped you. And then you might be able to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason of the hope that lies within you. The fourth lesson is just simply that there is grace to meet every need. You know, God's grace is enough, and it is plentiful, and it is abundant, and it is amazing. God's grace is there, and no matter how big our thorn in the flesh might be, God's grace is sufficient for you, for me. It's able to reach down to the lowest of lows. It's able to to reach up to the highest of highs. And it's able to fill the greatest of all chasms in our life. Because God's grace is all that we need. And so no matter what situation you are in today, or what you might find yourself in next week or next year, or how weak you may feel, God's grace, His power, His protection, His presence, His strength is right there for you to assist you to give you the desire to give you the help to do what is right for his honor and glory so no matter where you may find yourself today like paul remember god's grace is sufficient be encouraged today and keep looking up